It's Adam here for PC Monitors and today I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the BenQ EW2750ZL. The OSD is controlled by buttons that are actually behind the monitor. It doesn't have any nice little joystick or anything like that or a controller like some BenQ monitors have. You can also see there's a little um, power LED here which glows green when the monitor's on and it glows amber when the monitor's on standby. You can't really see it too clearly on the camera, but there are also little, there's a little power symbol there and, and a few dots just to indicate where the buttons are. Um, well, they're in line with the buttons. The buttons are actually at the back of the monitor. Um, I find that a little bit pointless, having the um, indications of what the buttons do on the side of the monitor, because most people are going to be using the buttons whilst they're in front of the monitor. And I have to say, although things are quite clearly labelled on the screen, um, it's actually kind of hard to work out if you're in line with a particular button, and that means you, you do mispress buttons sometimes. Um, what I really dislike, actually, is the fact that the power button, the one at the bottom, which I sometimes press instead of exit by accident, it doesn't feel any different to the other buttons, so you can accidentally press that, the whole thing turns off. That's pretty annoying. So definitely not the most intuitive navigation system, especially not for a BenQ monitor, but um, hopefully you won't spend too much time messing around in the menu once you've got everything set up. So if you press one of the buttons, other than the power button, you get this little quick menu here, and it has a few um, options. You can actually customise these options in the menu, which I'll show you a little bit later. The first button controls the low blue light settings, which I quite like, and I discuss them in the review. The second is picture mode, so the different presets of the monitor. There are a fair few of them. And you can hear the uh, buttons make quite a satisfying click once you press them, which is nice. I know some people don't like touch-sensitive buttons. Let's get it back to my standard setting there. Next is volume control, and that controls the volume of the integrated speakers or anything you have connected to the 3.5mm jack. And then there's a menu button allows you to access the main menu of the OSD. Now I'm just going to turn the brightness down a little bit so you can actually see the menu items otherwise it's going to look a bit bleached on the video. And as I'll explore in the review the, uh, the brightness control of this monitor is uh, it's, it's excellent. I mean it, it gives you a, a huge luminance adjustment range which is really good. Can't make it too... Uh, this room is quite bright actually in the air the screen surface is kind of light matte anti-glare, so um, you can see there's a bit of a sort of, not exactly a reflection, but a bit of glare in that area, so it's because I've got the monitor very dim at the moment. And I'll explore that more in the review, I mean it's not something to worry about at all, and I think the uh, this screen surface gives a really nice sort of crisp look to the image, which I, I much prefer over stronger matte surfaces. So you can see that the, the menu is set out in BenQ's usual modern style. It's got various different sections. The first one, display there, has lots of options which as usual are greyed out because they're only applicable to analogue connections and I'm using HDMI which is a digital connection. You can of course select the input source. There are two different HDMI uh, ports on the monitor and D-Sub VGA which is the analogue connection. There's a picture menu which has your basic sort of image controls like brightness, contrast, sharpness. There are various gamma modes you can select, including a new super um, super low gamma mode zero, which I've never seen on a BenQ monitor before. I'm not exactly sure why they added that, but they did anyway. And color temperature, so you can use one of these predefined color tones, or you can manually select the uh, red, green and blue colour channel values.
there's a new option here black level and that's a digital black level alteration option and I think it's probably easiest to show you what this does by opening up um, a website with a, with a gradient so you can see the effect that has but 16 is the default and provided you're using the right signal and, and we talk about that in the calibration section how to correct the color signal um, there's actually no need to adjust the black level it's it's really just for one of those things that some people might like to, to tweak and perhaps if they're using like a, an older games console or something then it might be relevant but uh, for PC use it's really and, and modern games consoles I don't really see the point um, so if I I'm not sure how well this will actually turn out on the camera either but if you look at the lower end of this gradient this is how it should look more or less I mean this is how it looks um, with the default black level um, I, I'm aware that you can uh, see a nasty little reflection there in person that's actually nowhere near as obvious but for some reason on the camera it's uh, bleedingly obvious and it's quite annoying but um, if you basically if you raise the black level as I've done there it makes black look lighter than it should and it also makes some of the darkest shades look lighter than they should if I lower it so I'm going to lower it lower than 16 which is the default it doesn't actually change black I know that's not too obvious because of the reflection I'm really sorry about that um, it doesn't actually change black at all you don't gain any contrast advantage but it does make these near black shades appear darker So I know that wasn't exactly the best explanation and it wasn't a very good demonstration of what that does but really I wouldn't worry too much about that uh, setting and I wouldn't bother changing it to be honest. There's hue which is um, another thing I wouldn't bother changing but that's actually greyed out on most of the presets including the one I'm using here. There's a, a saturation level adjustment. Now I know some, some users do like a heavily saturated image if you increase the saturation levels beyond the default which is 50 what happens is it, it makes um, it basically pulls lots of shades closer to the edge of the color gamut it doesn't actually adjust the color gamut of the monitor that's that's dictated by the backlight and this, this setting can't change that um, so what it does is it, it pulls um, shades closer to the edge of the gamut so they, they look more saturated in general but that also means that you lose uh, natural variety of shades they, they don't look as they should and basically um, you, you lose a huge amount of variety and you get what people would uh, refer to as shade crushing so uh, that's just a, a sort of setting it's similar to Nvidia's digital vibrancy setting they've got on the control panel um, and also color vibrance which you get on some of BenQ's other monitors like the XL series so it's there if you want to use it I wouldn't advise using it though it's AMA, Advanced Motion Acceleration, the pixel overdrive feature of the monitor and there are the usual three settings there, off, high and premium and as I explore in the review I'd recommend keeping it on the default of high there's an option to reset colour which I believe only resets things in the picture menu rather than resetting everything next there's picture advanced and that gives you another way of changing the image presets, the picture mode of the monitor there is an HDMI RGB PC range option and that's explored in the calibration section of the review you should use RGB 0 to 255 which is the full range signal and it's actually set to 16 to 235 by default on, on some older games consoles or for, for compatibility reasons you might want to use a limited range signal but it's always best to try and use a full range signal and then adjust your uh, your GPU or whatever you're using to also use a full range signal. There's a new feature called super resolution and what that does is it massively increases the sharpness. And if you enable this in the native resolution everything just looks stupidly sharp, far too sharp and it just looks quite ugly really. But really what this um, setting is designed for is if you're viewing lower resolution content or perhaps you're using a non-native resolution of the monitor 
um, it can try and overcome the sort of natural softness you'll get there and I mean personally I don't really like the effect anyway but uh, some people do and it's, uh, it's an option for you to use there. There's a setting which I think BenQ monitors used to have a while ago called Smart Focus which seems to have made a strange return to, the, uh, to this monitor and that basically allows you to highlight a particular area of the image of the screen so you can sort of focus on it. You see there, um, it's got sort of a highlight in the middle and everything else is dimmer. And you might want to use this if you're viewing um, videos that you can't make full screen or you're vi vi um, viewing particular images or certain sections of a document and you want to focus on them or if you're presenting it to other people you might want them to focus on a particular area. So that's really what that's for. And you can also, you can customise where on the screen um, the box appears. You can also have a small or a large box and you can actually, uh, I mean it doesn't really give you much customization of the size options there, so it's just small or large. Scaling, ah, I see. So you can actually make it a little smaller or a little bit larger. So you do get a little bit more flexibility than just small or large. That's what the scaling option there does. So I'm just going to turn this off. It's a dynamic contrast setting which I explore in the review. And there is a display mode setting which is not relevant to the native resolution. It has two options there, full and aspect. And essentially what that means is if you're running a non-native resolution with a different aspect ratio to 16 by 9, you'll be able to select the either full, which will stretch the image to fill, fill the screen anyway, or aspect, which will maintain the aspect ratio of the source resolution. And I believe that was the last option I can select there. The next menu is audio which, as you can imagine, allows you to change things like the volume of the integrated speakers or the anything connected to the 3.5mm jack. Mute that. You can audio-only mode. I'm not entirely sure what that does. I've never seen that setting before. It probably says in the manual, but I'm not really one to read monitor manuals, so there you are. And an audio select option, which allows you to select whether the HDMI cable is being used as the audio source or whether you want to be using the uh, one of the jacks as the audio source instead. And finally there's a system menu which has the remaining settings. So you've got various different settings of the OSD you can change such as the language, how long it's displayed before disappearing after the last button press and a feature to lock the OSD if you don't want people to fiddle around with it. There are also different custom keys, so you might recall I said earlier that the some of the buttons that you would press for the quick menu, they, they can be customised. So by default there's low blue light, picture mode and volume, but I could change uh, volume for example, because I never don't really use the integrated speakers or anything, so I could change that to something I do use. Um, so you can select various different things there. And I sometimes just like to be able to quickly change brightness. So now I've changed custom key 3 to brightness. If you press one of the, get the quick menu up, then you can see that the third option there is brightness. So you can quickly adjust that instead, which is quite useful. There's DDC slash CI, which is the plug and play functionality of the monitor, and it allows you to, for example, set the um, various options of the OSD using software, such as the uh, BenQ Display Pilot software. So just leave that enabled, which is the default. There's no reason to disable it on modern systems. You can automatically get it to switch HDMI source depending on which you've got and uh, uh, which you're using and what you've got connected to it. 
there's a feature which will allow the monitor to actually switch itself off or go into a sort of very low power state um, if no signals detected for a certain amount of time. Um, I mean, I I, auto, I just press the power button on the monitor, which uh, cuts the power off, um, puts it onto that low power state anyway. So I don't use this, but I know some people um, kind of forget to, to do that or just can't be bothered. So it's a nice little feature to have. There is a resolution notice feature which just gives you a little notice in the corner of the screen to say when you're running a non-native resolution and to remind you that the full HD resolution is what you should be using. There's some basic information as well. So you can see um, the current resolution and refresh rate that you're running and also you can see the optimum resolution which is basically the, the native resolution refresh rate and as I explore in the review you can run this monitor or at least um, this particular revision of the monitor that I'm using you can run this at 75 Hertz without any sort of negative implications so that's what I'm doing um, I don't actually other than for the purposes of the overclocking section I don't actually test it at 75 Hertz in the review um, just so you're aware and that was really the last feature of the OSD which I can show you because the um, last thing there, reset all, is not something I'm going to do. And that just um, resets everything to the factory defaults. So there you go. That was a quick run through of the OSD on screen display menu system of the BenQ EW2750ZL. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info.